Hey guys, how y'all doing? So today we're going to take a look at Homefront the Revolution. Now this game got released last Friday on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. And I've been playing it for a couple of days now and I just wanted to give you my thoughts. Now this isn't going to be a typical review, this is going to be more in depth and I'm not going to give a rating out of 10. If you want that, head to the link in the description below. Otherwise, this is Homefront the Revolution and I'm playing it on PlayStation 4. Now I'm not going to show you any of the later levels, any of the cool stuff you can do in the later levels. I'm just going to show you the initial beginning of the chapter and talk to you about my thoughts of the game. So Homefront is made by Dambuster Studios. They've been around for some time up in Nottingham and they've been working on this game. Uh, it is not really a sequel to the first one at all. It's almost like a separate title altogether. Although it does keep some elements from the first one in the second one. Korea and the USA. That's it really. The story is completely different. Um, and this game's running on CryEngine, so it looks pretty damn good. It came out, and it's, what, $49.99, $39.99, depending where you purchase it, and it's a first-person shoot up It's a decent uh, game to begin with, to put it mildly. Um, there's a day one patch, which is 3.8 gigabytes big, I think, which is absolutely ludicrous. And there are some significant issues with the game. But first we'll start with some good points. The game looks good. It looks really, really good. Run on CryEngine, the lighting is good, the shadows are good, you know. Facial animations, uh, character models, details. It's all really, really good. Um, no fault there. The game does look really nice. It looks better, in fact, when it's dark and it's raining. When you can see the moonlight and the rain sort of shine off the moonlight and the way it sort of shines on the walls where the glow of light hit the walls from like outside lights um, that is incredible the sound effects are pretty bog standard for shooting up you know you you'll be listening to p voice acting is okay it's not great it's okay you get the gist and you move on pretty much the same with any shooting up game out there um, FPS it's it's okay it, it's voice acting it's it's nothing really immersive or, or you know, you don't really get sort of too involved with the characters, not like you would an RPG or uh, another type of game, but it's there and it works. Uh, every character sounds how, how they should to me. Um, they may not to you, but I found that every character, pretty much you can, you know, look at that character and the voice goes with the character, which some games don't really nail. Um, gameplay is actually really fun when it works, um, running, shooting around, Riding a motorbike, which is the only vehicle in the game for some reason, but riding a motorbike, it's all pretty fun. It's all pretty twitchy, responsive, uh, really good um, gunplay. It's really quite fun. Um, but, and there's a big but, it's hampered by a lot of issues. Now, I found these issues to become more apparent in the later half of the game. Um, the first half was pretty flawless. The main issue I've encountered throughout the entire game, even after that day one patch, which is three gigabytes, which is supposed to be bug fixes and various optimizations according uh, to its notes, uh, is when the autosave kicks in, the gameplay stops. And that really breaks the atmosphere, it really breaks the immersion, and it essentially breaks your feeling of the game because you're playing this and, and I was enjoying it, but then as soon as your save kicked in, I thought, uh, I'm playing a game. You know, it's disappointing, to say the least. Now, I don't know if this is a CryEngine thing, because Enemy Front, which also released on PlayStation 3, I think it was last year or the year before, uh, was also run on CryEngine, and that had exactly the same issue. If you want to check out my review, I've mentioned that in, the, uh, in my review. That had exactly the same issue as this. The autosave kicked in and the frame rate was terrible. I mean, it doesn't just drop a tiny bit, it, it completely stops. The game stops for a split seconds. Um, also throughout the game, there are many areas that there is a lot of action, and these very rarely fail to reach 30 frames per second, and that's disappointing. It really hampen, uh, hampers the experience. So, you sort of left feeling a bit, I don't know, disappointed. This could have been a good game. Um, it's never going to be a great game, let's face it. You know, even with the visuals, even with you know, fun gameplay, it was never going to be a great game. There's no... It doesn't sort of reinvent the wheel as such. 
Um, it doesn't do anything outstanding, apart from one thing that I really enjoyed. But other than that, it doesn't really do anything outstanding. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, and it can pass off as a good game, just like any Call of Duty uh, or uh, any you know other sh first person shooter. They're good games. They're not great. You play them for the gameplay. You don't play them for the story, and you don't play them for for you know anything else most of the time. So it ends up being a little mediocre. Um, now the other main issue I had with this game was when the second patch downloaded, which downloaded yesterday, and that ruined my game completely. Um, unless, unless I start the game over, I'm stuck uh, on the level I'm at with absolutely no way of getting, um, well, no way of progressing, put it that way. I can't progress because everything is already done and it's it's a really messed up save. I did do a live stream, but the video is on my channel, but it's not great because my internet's not great for live streaming, but it sort of shows you the whole game is completely cocked up and I don't know if that's just happened to me, but it only happened after the patch was installed. So I emailed them and their exact words to me were, we've noted it down, so no fix yet, but hopefully it will get fixed in the future. And then I may go back to Homefront to finish up and brush up the campaign, um, maybe brush up um, the side quests and uh, the areas. Now Homefront is split into say four main missions. You've got the main missions, the quest missions or the campaign missions, then you've got side missions which are little optional objectives which you can do um, and then you've got um, missions or, or areas that you need to um, bring over to the resistance in order to get them on your side so you can rebel against the KPA and uh, they all don't really overstay their welcome. They're put in place in such a way that you're never doing the same thing uh, for too long and so you're never out of the action too long but you're never in the action too long uh, and the action can get pretty insane especially with um, the other issue I'm about to talk to you about which is difficulty. The game's difficulty is incredibly hard. Uh, novice is stupidly tough. These enemies seem to have pinpoint action and they know exactly where you are and they really do kick ass and it's kind of frustrating because even on novice I found it really quite tough. There were times where a bloke took two or three RPG rounds before he went down and it's just it's diabolical how hard they are. Um, but you're never stuck in that situation too long. So while I did get frustrated with some certain situations, especially in the later half of the game where uh, you had Goliath shooting rounds, you had enemies everywhere, the gameplay would stutter, um, you know, it was almost unplayable at times s towards the end of the game. At the beginning half of the game, I thought it was pretty good and I was really enjoying playing through Homefront The Revolution. Now Homefront The Revolution also has a multiplayer mode and this is roughly six missions of just doing what you would in the campaign but you can with about up to three friends I think it's up to three friends um, actually you know it's not too bad um, playing on on your own is you know pretty boring playing it with friends is probably the best option playing it with randomers you know it's not as fun as playing with friends but once you've done those six missions I don't think you'll ever go back to those so the multiplayer is kind of is there for a little bit but that's it. So Homefront ends up being a mediocre game, which is a shame because the last one was also a mediocre game. Um, so it doesn't really improve on the last game at all. Obviously visually it's better, but other than that it doesn't really improve, which is sad because I wanted to enjoy this game more than I did. And I think I wanted the Homefront series to become something more than it was because it had a good, it had a good premise, but it never quite reaches potential and that is the same with this game. Now like I said I'm not going to give a score out of 10 because you can head to the uh, link in the description below for that but this is just my view and personal thoughts on the game. Um, if you are having any of the issues I have and you've managed to fix them let me know how. If you want to know more about Homefront Revolution I'm sure I can do an update video uh, once a few more patches are released. Uh, other than that let me know what you thought of Homefront the Revolution uh, if you've purchased it and um, how you felt about all the issues that it seems to have. As always guys, like, comment, and if you want, subscribe. If you dislike, hit the dislike button. And I shall see you soon. Cheers.